So in the previous class we have seen how the information that is the change in the environment it is noticed by the organism. So animals they have a special tissue specialized tissue in their bodies called as nervous tissue which consists of nerve cells by which the information is received from the environment and this information is carried to other parts of the nervous system where analysis of the information takes place. What is that information? What is the change? Is it useful or harmful? What kind of response has to be produced? What type of movements are to be produced in the body? These kind of decisions are taken by the nervous system. That is also nervous system. It's a, it is also a part of the nervous system. So the nervous system is a very organized system which has got different parts in which each one performs a specific function. So in the previous class we have seen the tip of the nerve cells present in the sense organs they receive the information we call them as receptors. So the receptors receive the information and this information is carried by the nerves, neurons. So neurons are a part of the nervous system. To where these neurons are carrying the information, the information is being carried in the form of electrical impulses from one nerve cell to another nerve cell. So from various parts of our body the information is collected and it is taken to different parts of our nervous system. Here we have the two major parts of our nervous system that is the spinal cord and brain which comprises the central nervous system. So information is taken to the spinal cord and brain. We see a movie, the images, the pictures, the bright colorful pictures and the sound everything is taken to our mind. So it is remembered in the mind, it is analyzed in the mind, we observe the emotions, we observe the scenes, we enjoy the beauty, we enjoy the music, we enjoy the dance choreography. So this is all happens because we see that, that means we are taking the information through our receptors, through the nerves, to our mind. So it goes to the brain for processing. Sometimes, whatever the change in the environment, if it is harmful, that means a furious dog is approaching you. So will you enjoy the situation? No. In such cases, a furious dog is attacking you, then immediately you have to run away. You have to defend yourself, protect yourself. So your body must be ready to defend, to fight or to jump or to run away. So response has to be produced in such kind of stimulus. Sometimes you see an ice cream, your favorite flavor, either it is a vanilla or a chocolate or butterscotch or whatever. So you have seen your favorite flavored ice cream, your mouth waters. So you make a move towards the ice cream, you make a move towards the ice cream cart to buy the ice cream. So in this way for a response, for a change in the environment, for a uh, change in the environment, for a stimulus there is a response. So this response is generated by the nervous system. So stimulus is recognized, observed, analyzed and appropriate response is also produced by the nervous system. So we have different body parts like hands and legs. So here we have seen that whenever there is some information, some stimulus is there, the information is taken to the nervous system, it is analyzed, processed and everything is done, decisions are taken. But this seems to be very complex and long and lengthy process, isn't it? Yes. But sometimes we will not be having that much time to produce a response. You need to produce very quick responses. Suppose you kept your hand on a hot object, you touched a hot object. Barefooted you put your leg on a bike silencer, it burns, it's very hot. By mistake you kept your hand on a pressure cooker which is very hot. So the pressure cooker is hot. The heat it goes to your fingers, from your fingers to your hand, to your spinal cord, to your brain and you will analyze this is hot, I have to remove otherwise my hand burns, then you will remove. 
see how long and complicated this process is. In the meantime, definitely your hand get damaged, your fingers get burnt. So in these cases, you need to produce very quick responses, very quick responses. So we produce such quick responses in many of the situations for many of the dangerous stimuli to protect ourselves. We call that such quick responses with a special name called as reflex actions or simply you can call them as reflexes. Reflex. So reflex is an immediate response involuntary without long thinking and analysis spontaneously they are produced. Most of the cases, in most of the cases, they are protective in nature. That is, they protect you from dangerous stimuli, harmful stimuli. Right? So you see that when you are learning how to ride a bicycle, so you don't know how to ride a bicycle, you started, just started learning bicycle or you started learning a bike. So in the beginning, it will be very difficult. See, when you started learning a bike, riding a bike, then if you wanted to apply the brake, it will take very long time to apply the brake. In the meantime, definitely you may hit somebody. Because when you are learning, the change in the environment, somebody has come across to your bike, then your mind receives that, it tells you that apply the brake, it will take very long time. By the time you take the decision and apply the brake, you might have hit the person. But after learning means by doing the act several times, it becomes a response. So very quick. So when you have expertise at that uh, riding a bike, you learned that bike riding and you are riding since four years or five years, you learned everything there. So very casually, even you are driving so casually, then you can operate the brake and clutch and with very good coordination. You need not think to apply a brake when something comes. So spontaneously your muscles do that because it has become a reflex action. So reflexes, they help to protect us from the dangerous stimuli. These are the very quick involuntary responses shown by our body, but they are not always protective. They are not only protective. See, sometimes it is not only protective, sometimes it is behavioral. Say you are in your classroom, just you are uh, uh, just writing something there immediately, principal enters your classroom. By seeing your principal immediately you will stand. That is a response shown towards a stimulus. So this is not protective in nature. Whenever the lunch bell is given, your mouth starts salivating. You will feel the hunger in your stomach. Till then you don't feel that. Just you are involved in writing your notes, just jotting down the points from the board. Suddenly if you hear the bell, that hunger starts, initiates. So, so this kind of responses are produced to a stimulus. So responses are not always protective, but sometimes they are protective. You see the characteristic of a reflex. They are very quick. They are involuntary. Sometimes they are not under our control. You see, they are not under our control. When a fly approaches your eyes, immediately you close your eyelids. You can't keep without closing your eyelids. You can't stare like this. It all happens involuntarily. So quick involuntary responses, mostly they are protective in nature. So here the other point is the reflexes, they reduce the complexity of the process of decision taking. So normally what should happen, the information taken from the outside environment must be taken to your brain to think, analyze and take a decision, but it is very lengthy process. So in most of the cases, the decisions are not, the information is not totally taken to the brain and the information is not processed there. However, the information, it goes to the brain. But in the meanwhile, the decisions are taken so quickly, where they are taken at this point, spinal cord. It doesn't mean that the information has not reached the brain. When you sense something, you, your hand touched a hot object, the information has come to the spinal cord. Here a quick decision is taken in the spinal cord, remove the hand. So again the order is passed to the body parts in this way, from body parts to spinal cord to the body parts again. So this is very quick. 
because going from here to here to here again here to here to here it is a very lengthy and complicated process but what happens here is that from the body parts as soon as the information is taken by the spinal cord the special cells the association neurons present in the spinal cord take the decision remove the hand so the hand is removed however this information is supplied to the brain you will notice that you touched a hot object and you removed your hand but without involvement of your brain in taking the decision the spinal cord does it so quickly that is to protect you from the hot object so reduces the complexity now here we discussed one point that the spinal cord is responsible for reflexes the immediate uh, responses in case of the body parts like hands and legs there are some reflexes called cranial reflexes where spinal cord is not involved see some sensor organs are directly connected to the brain like eyes there also reflexes are produced but here in case of your hands and legs when you touch a hot object when you step on a sharp object immediately you show the reflexes so here the reflex actions are taken in the spinal cord so which part of the spinal cord is responsible for to produce a reflex action the unit the part of the spinal cord which produces a reflex action is called as a reflex arc reflex arc so what does this reflex arc consist of it consists of one neuron that is coming from the body parts it is sensory neuron this sensory neuron it brings the information it brings the information to one special neuron in the spinal cord this is called as association neuron and this association neuron it takes the decision and it gives the order what kind of movement has to be produced in the muscle to the effector organ that means the muscles so again it will go back to the muscles by the motor neurons sensory neurons bring the information from the body part or from the part where it received the information about the stimuli sensory neurons bring it to the spinal cord and here the association neuron takes the decision and the decision the order is passed to the body part through the motor neurons you can see an arc here this is what called as reflex arc so reflex reflex arc is a unit in the spinal cord which helps in the production of reflex actions so we have learned that the unit in the spinal cord which produces the reflex actions is called as reflex arc so we have taken the cross section of spinal cord in which we are studying the arrangement of neurons and how the reflex action is produced in the spinal cord the information about the stimuli is taken by one neuron that is analyzed by another neuron the decision to the effector organ is carried by another neuron so three different types of neurons are involved in execution of a reflex arc three different types now let us see what are the various parts involved in the execution of reflex arc here i told you three types of neurons three types of neurons what are they the first one is here sensory neuron sensory neuron the sensory neuron it carries the information here the fingers touched the hot object so the hot information is carried by the sensory neurons to this particular part of the spinal cord it brings still here so here the second one who is receiving the information from the sensory neuron and analyzing it and taking the decision that is the association neuron
Now the third one, which carry the orders to the effector, is called as motor neuron. So it carries the information, the decision, what has to be done here. Here the muzzle in the hand contracts, so by that the hand it raises up. So this muzzle, the muzzle in the hand is called as effector. That means it is affected by this decision. So that is the effector. So these are the various parts that are involved in a reflex action. And a reflex arc, it consists of three different types of neurons. Here. It also involves one receptor, one effector. Receptor receives the information, effectors creates a movement. In between these receptor and effector, sensory neuron, association neuron and motor neuron. These three neurons execute the reflex action. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.